The Cat and the Mice A Tale from Tibet Once upon a time, there was a cat who lived in a large farmhouse in which there were a great number of mice. For many years, the cat had no difficulty catching as many mice as she wanted to eat. And she lived a very peaceful and pleasant life. But as time passed, she found that she was growing old and infirm, and it had become more and more difficult for her to catch the same number of mice as before. So after thinking very carefully about what the best thing to do was, she called all the mice together, and after promising not to touch them, she addressed them as follows. Oh, mice, she said, I have called you together in order to say something to you. The fact is, I have led a very wicked and selfish life, and now in my old age, I repent, for I have caused you so much trouble and grief. I'm going to, for the future, turn over a new leaf. It is my intention to give myself up entirely to prayer. And I will no longer trouble you, chase you or eat you. From now on, you are at liberty to run about as freely as you'd like with no fear from me. Fear of me. All I ask is that twice a day you file past me in a single file procession and each one of you bow down to me to thank me for not eating you. All right? Let this be a token of your gratitude for my kindness. When the mice heard this, they were greatly pleased for they thought that now at last they would be free from all danger from their former enemy, the cat. So they very thankfully promised to fulfill the cat's conditions and agreed that they would file past her and make a salam twice a day. When evening came, the cat took her seat on a cushion at one end of the room and the mice all went by in single file, each one making a profound salam as they passed her. Now the cunning old cat had arranged this little plan very carefully with an objective of her own. For as soon as the procession had passed by, with the exception of the very last little mouse, she suddenly seized the last mouse, last mouse in her claws without anyone noticing what had happened and devoured it at her leisure. And so twice a day, every day, she seized the last mouse of the series. And for a long time she lived very happily, comfortably, without any trouble at all in catching her mice. None of the mice realized what was happening. Now it happened that amongst these mice were two very good friends whose names were Rambe and Ambe. They were very attached to each other. Now these two were cleverer and more cunning than most of the other mice. After a while, they noticed that the number of mice in the house seemed to be decreasing in spite of the fact that the cat had promised not to eat them. So they laid their heads together and arranged a little plan for the future. They agreed that Rambe would always walk at the front of the line and Ambe would walk at the end. And as the procession passed by the cat, Rambe would call out to Ambe and Ambe would answer Rambe at frequent, frequent intervals. So the next evening, when the procession started as usual, Rambe marched out along in front and Ambe took up his position at the end. 
As soon as Rambe had passed the cushion where the cat was seated and had made his salam, he called out in a shrill voice, Brother Rambe, are you there? Here I am, Brother Rambe, squeaked the other from the rear of the procession. And so they went on calling out and answering one another until the entire procession had filed past the cat. The cat had not dared to touch Ambe as long as his brother kept calling out to him. The cat was naturally very annoyed at having to go hungry that night and was very cross all night. She thought it was only an accident that had brought the two friends, one in front and one in the rear of the procession, and she hoped to make up for her enforced abstinence from food by finding a particularly fat mouse at the end of the procession the next morning. What then was her amazement and disgust when she found that on the following morning the very same arrangement had been made and Rambe called to Ambe and Ambe answered Rambe until all the mice had passed her by. And so, for a second time, she was stolen, she was foiled of her meal. However, she disguised her feelings of anger and decided to give the mice one more chance. So in the evening, she took her seat as usual on the cushion and waited for the mice to appear. Meanwhile, Rambe and Ambe had warned all the other mice to be on the lookout and to be ready to take flight the moment the cat showed up or showed any appearance of anger. At the appointed time, the procession started as usual. And as soon as Rambe had passed the cat, he squeaked out, Where are you, Brother Rambe? Here I am, Brother Rambe, came the shrill voice from the rear. This was more than the cat could stand. She made a fierce leap right into the middle of the mice, who, however, was thoroughly prepared for her. And in an, in an instant, They scuttled off in every direction into their holes. And before the cat had time to catch a single one, the room was empty, empty, and not a sign of a mouse was to be seen anywhere. After this, the mice were very careful not to put any further trust in the treacherous cat, who soon after died of starvation, owing to her being unable to procure to get any of her customary food. But Rambe and Ambe lived for many years and were held in high esteem and great honour by all the other mice in the community. Thank you.